I work here, which is why I couldn't be there. I had to travel from here, who watch out for that thing, all the way to here. But I wouldn't be anywhere if it wasn't for the people sitting out there. I volunteer here and here, but I wouldn't volunteer anywhere if it wasn't for my parents, who taught me that public service is both a responsibility and an opportunity. A lesson they taught indirectly through both words and actions. Our parents never gave us life advice. They just suggested certain rules for different situations, and I'd like to share some of these rules with you today, as you might find them useful. First, from my father, in chess, never make an arbitrary move. In driving, never speed up to a red light. And in drama, always think before you act. Now, from my mother, in kindergarten, share, be kind, and always, always, Clean up after yourself. <laughs> Next, in writing, be true. And failing that, at least be concise. <laughs> and that's all. Shoot the ball. <laughs> Lastly, their most important rule of all in public speech never make a speech in person when you can send a video presentation. <laughs>
beer manufacturer, and Karen makes the best ribs in Wisconsin. Um, on my father's side, cousin Jackie and Joe Koenig are here. Um, there's a picture of my father um, as a young boy uh, staring up at Jackie with a very innocent look, and my cousin Jackie looks like this. <laughs> I've heard a few stories about my father uh, as a young, at a young age, but one is that in high school, he would flirt with women by throwing their shoes up on stage during student assemblies. <laughs> the other is that he would sleepwalk and pee in his sister Carrie's underwear drawer. <laughs> that, that's for that terrible garment speech you made years ago. <laughs> My mother has some close friends here as well, which she grew up with. Linda Belial is here, and Kathy, Karen, and uh, Cheryl, which make up the Yayas, which is a solution to Red Hat societies all around the world. <laughs> so now you know a little bit about the best parents of the year. Nevertheless, though, I wish I knew my parents more in different ways, because it's clear today that they have had an intimate effect on so many of you. If you see if you see me later, please tell me some good stories about Alan and Christy. Thank you. So I actually just scrapped the whole thing that I was going to say because I was actually quite inspired by the earlier speeches this afternoon and what a great organization COA is. Um, I was reflecting for a couple moments on where I am as a parent, as you see, and where I am in my professional life. And lo and behold, I'm a social worker who works in a nonprofit organization, have only worked with children, um, and as a consultant my whole career, um, have only given back. And I would say post-college, pre-getting uh, my MSW, I had that epiphany that you get to be two different types of people in the world. Either people who give back to the community with their time and their energy and their volunteerism, or you give your money so those wonderful programs can happen. Right? Those are the two types. Some people are fortunate to be able to do both, and those are my parents, that they are able to do that. And that was one of the, I think now, one of the most important um, values that they have instilled in me as a parent, because lo and behold, this is one of the most important things I want to uh, give to my children, that you have two, two roles that you can either be in the community, that we are all part of, um, uh, <laughs> that we are all part of a greater community and a greater world, and who we are as people isn't just, just our individual selves, but we're part of a community, and that's the value that they have shared with us. Now, in my years of parenting, without having quiet children, my children are not wallflowers, as you can see, um, Learning all the parenting stuff, how to deal with babies and toddlers and you know fun. having fun. <laughs> That's not really the best important. It's to figure out what types of grandparents you have. This is a, you know, do you have the people who like to sit and just watch? Do you have the braggers? That's my dad. <laughs> I, I figured out there's two types that really every parent really needs to have as a grandparent. You need to have a shopper. And you need to have the one that wants to be the nanny that doesn't need a lot of direction. That's very key. And we got both of them. So with that, our nan is going to share. These are the things I love to do with my nanny and grandpa, not my mom that my parents do not really like to do with me. <laughs> my grandpa Alan loves to fish with me. My mom won't even touch the words. <laughs> he also loves roaming garage sales, and we each have free $2 bikes. <laughs> and my mom says that they are worth exactly $2. <laughs> and make breakfast on the beach every morning when we visit. Thank you, Noah and Lisa and JJ. That's a 
another rule, don't follow dogs, <laughs> children singing, <laughs> JJ from Korea, <laughs> and also your grandchildren. So I'd like to invite Alan and Christy up here, because they probably want to respond to the family secrets that have come out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much.